Surfing the web, whether you are doing it from your laptop computer or from your phone, chances are you might just be using the browser that came pre-installed on your device, but you actually have other ones that you can choose from. And oftentimes they are much more secure and private than the default. So whether you are on an Android phone, a Windows computer, or maybe you live in the Apple ecosystem, you probably just use Microsoft Edge, Safari, or Google Chrome but we have so many other options for internet browsing that are just as easy and convenient to use, but come with much much better privacy policies. See, here's the thing. Many browsers come with ads to finance their organizations or built-in trackers to create profiles about your browsing habits. And this is not a new thing. Browsers have been doing this for decades, like since I was a small child. And with newer studies like this one from 2020 by Mozilla, showing that it's still common for browsing histories to be tracked, we know that it's still a current issue. Even though the biggest browser in use today, which is Google's Chrome, will eventually replace third-party cookies with Google's Topics, which they are currently rolling out on some platforms, that still pulls interest-based data to serve up relevant ads. And if you are a privacy aficionado, then you may not want your browser pulling any data for ads. So these are my top favorite privacy and or security-centric browsers for the year because security and privacy can be different things. We are going to start with Brave. Folks, I love Brave. It is an open source browser based on Chromium and it is completely free. Brave blocks things like ads, fingerprinting, and trackers by default, so you don't have to do any extra setup for privacy if you don't feel the need to. Unlike Chrome though, even though this one is built on Chromium, Chrome is different, you don't have to install an extension to block ad trackers or configure anything in your settings. Cookies and cross-site tracking is blocked and there's built-in protections against things like malware and phishing using crowdsource lists of malicious sites. And they build in a Tor mode too for anonymized network routing. Now Brave comes with a pre-installed setting that looks like an extension called Brave Shields, which is this very easy to view drop-down menu showing you all the trackers that are blocked on each and every site that you visit. You can disable this per site if something breaks or it doesn't work correctly when it's on, but in most cases it will probably make your browsing faster. Faster. After acquiring Tailcat, Brave also made their search engine, which is called Brave Search, more privacy centered. Brave Search can be used in any browser, so you could use it in Google Chrome even. But replacing Google's search with the Brave browser and Brave Search is like doubling down on your own privacy. So, how does Brave actually make money as a business? Well, their business model uses something called Brave Rewards with Brave Ads. Businesses can sign up for Brave ads, which are advertisements shown to anonymous users, keeping users free from being identified to brands. The cool part is that users can make money whenever they enable Brave rewards, so you can earn tokens for browsing online, which can be converted into monetary funds called BAT. Users can turn that money into contributions to their favorite content creators as well if a creator is signed up with Brave rewards. It's a really cool way that users can tip the websites that they visit the most, which if you prefer not viewing targeted advertising on those sites, like on YouTube, this can be a very nice way to contribute back to people who make content for a living, like me. I'm a brave creator, so when you visit my YouTube channel, you can tip me with your brave rewards. The nice thing is that costs you absolutely nothing. Now, if you are worried about losing things like your bookmarks, your browsing history, etc., you can sync all of that data across devices too. You can create an account and you can sync your browser profile between your desktop and mobile, so those things that we get so accustomed to using are still conveniently available, but Brave uses client-side encryption so they can't see any of that data. They take security seriously internally too. Brave implements hardware keys for two-factor authentication for their employees, which is something that I recently learned during a tech event that I went to while speaking to their chief information security officer. She is so cool. She was awesome. I'm so happy that she was able to talk to me. Like, oh, wow, I fangirled. <laughs> Brave is not without its faults though. In 2020, they were auto-filling, auto-complete URLs typed into just the 
search bar to a site URL that, that they profited from after they struck this deal with Binance in 2020. They ceased this practice very soon after, and they also apologized for it and made sure that it never happened again. Even with that said, Brave continuously makes improvements to their security and privacy. They implement new features often, and they continue to be a leader for secure browsing. Plus, many of my favorite password managers also already work with Brave too, so it's really easy to implement those into a new browser as as well. Using a secure browser can help protect yourself, especially as you are traveling during spring break or you're going to a coffee shop and hanging out with friends, whatever it is that you do. Using this along with things like a VPN can make your data even harder to steal. I do this, but I also use Delete Me. Delete Me helps to stop criminals from using data like your legal name or your physical address for malicious uses like building a profile of information about you, which they could use in social engineering attacks, pretending to be you in order to open accounts with your information. Delete Me finds data broker sites, which are often the first place that a lot of criminals will go to find information about you. They search for your data and they send opt-out requests to those data brokers for you. And they do it continuously every single quarter to give you peace of mind because data brokers, they really like to republish data that they scrape up online. I have been using Delete Me for years as a paying customer and it is one of those services that I cannot live without. Delete Me has saved me so much time, and if you value your privacy, give their service a try. I have an exclusive coupon code now just for my viewers. Use the code SNUBS at checkout. That's S-N-U-B-S for 20% off any of their consumer plans. That's SNUBS for 20% off, and see how Delete Me can help you take your online privacy to the next level. Click the link below or just type in joindeleteme.com slash morse code to sign up today and a huge thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode. Next up is Firefox. Now, Firefox is super popular. They are cross-platform and also very easy and intuitive. This one has tons of support in terms of plugins and extensions, and it's open source. Of the secure and private browsers, Firefox takes the cake as the easiest one to switch to because it's so intuitive to use and it comes with all the convenience of your other browsers, which are normally built into the operating system. Like it has cross-platform syncing. It has built-in tools like this really cool PDF editor. So you can just edit PDFs within the browser. It's really neat. But Firefox is privacy focused first. They are backed by a nonprofit called the Mozilla Foundation. And they include things like enhanced tracking protection, which is a highly customizable tool. And it can be strengthened by the user or kept really light for general use. They have built cool add-ons like the Facebook container, which which prevents Facebook from tracking you around the web, since Facebook tends to be highly intrusive in terms of that kind of tracking. Firefox is also quite fast and it does not clog up memory like Chrome does. Now Mozilla has also built a simplistic and privacy focused browser for iOS and Android. This one is called Firefox Focus, which is very minimalistic and easily lets you control your data. You can delete browsing history with one tap and auto block trackers, which can offer faster loading from a mobile device. Now Tor is the last one that I wanted to mention today, and it's probably the one for the more hardcore users. This one is also open sourced, it's Firefox based, and it runs on the Tor network. Similar to Brave, Tor also blocks scripts and runs by default in a private mode. Every single time you close Tor, it erases your cookies and your sessions. So that means it's not going to be as convenient to use, but it also makes it very private. Tor doesn't support most popular extensions or plugins by design either. So again, not as convenient, but very private. It totally strips fingerprinting and scripts from running on sites. For example, if a site uses JavaScript, it might not work on Tor because Tor blocks all sorts of scripts from running. If you are logging into sites or browsing around certain domains, you may end up seeing a bunch of CAPTCHAs to enter because you will look like a bot to that website. But how does the Tor network work? 
Well, the Tor network bounces your traffic all around different relays. That makes it very hard to track anything that you're doing online. It encrypts your traffic and it hides your IP address from the destination site. Since it uses all of these hops to make your browsing anonymized, that does mean that you might end up with a slower experience. My experience on my home connection was definitely slowed down. So of these three, I would say Mozilla Firefox is the easiest one, the one that I would recommend to my non-techie friends. Tor is the one that I would recommend to all of my hacker and infosec friends. Brave is the middle of the ground one I would recommend to my techie friends who still want privacy, but also convenience and speed. I do recommend using a secure browser alongside my other recommendations, like using a good VPN, a password manager, hardware keys, secure browsing habits to really get the most out of your privacy choices online. There are also additional browsers to choose from as well, like we have Vivaldi, Epic, Puffin, Freenet, Waterfox, and more. But I made this list based on which ones I find to be the most convenient and the easiest to switch to for most people. If you want to go with one of those other ones, then you are more than welcome to. Check out these videos for more user-friendly security and privacy content, and I will see you very soon with another security and privacy video. Bye, y'all.